Tibetan Mastiff is an ancient dog breed with robust and strong body, giant head, fluffy coat and independent, protective and absolutely loyal temperament. There are top 10 interesting facts about the Tibetan Mastiff. I would love to thanks Bailey for letting me use its photos in this video. If you will like the Tibetan Mastiff and you would like to see more of it, definitely check her out. Link is in description. Number 1. Origin the history and origin of Tibetan Mastiff is surrounded by mystery. It is certainly a very old ancient dog breed that evolved in the west area of the high Himalayan mountains and the plains of Central Asia, where it was traditionally used as a guardian of the nomad herders and the guardian of Tibetan monasteries. We don't know what are the ancestors of Tibetan Mastiff or when they were developed. Some people even believe that it is one of the oldest dog in the world and that they are the basic stock from which which most modern large working breeds have been developed. For a long time the breed lived in isolation of the high Tibetan mountains, but it was known to the outside world for centuries and we have descriptions of Tibetan Mastiffs by many famous people such as Marco Polo. But it was not until the 19th century when the first specimen were imported to Europe. Number 2. Types it's important to say that there is not only one type of Tibetan Mastiff. Over the time, these dogs spread across West area with different climate, elevations and traditions, which is why two purebred Tibetan Mastiffs can look pretty differently. These dogs lived in, for example, Central Tibet, in Northern Mongolia, Nepal or Western Xiangjing, all very different regions. And you can clearly see some differences in the fur as some dogs have very dense and long mane around their neck, while some Tibetan Tibetan Mastiffs do not have this famous mane. Sometimes these types are called as lion type and tiger type. In the last few decades a new type of Tibetan Mastiff was created, a so-called Chinese Tibetan Mastiff, which is oftentimes viewed as less valuable than the original Tibetan Mastiff. It is due to the fact that they are suspicious about purity of the Chinese Mastiffs, because it is believed that they are oftentimes crossed with other breeds, such as Newfoundland or Chow Chow. Number 3 utilization. No matter which type or variety of the Tibetan Mastiff is, it should always be naturally good guardian. This is a hard worker with fearless, courageous, brave, territorial and naturally protective temperament. They were specifically bred for this purpose for centuries, so it's no wonder that they excel at it. They are especially known to be extremely good nocturnal sentry, keeping predators and intruders at bay and barking at suspicious sounds throughout the night. Number 4. Chained Dog the name Tibetan Mastiff is self-explaining. It is a large, mastiff type of a dog from Tibetan region, even though I think they would be better fit for mountain dog category than mastiff dog category. The original Tibetan name for these dogs is Dog Ki, which literally means chained dog or dog to tie. It is probably because these dogs used to be chained during the day and let loose at night to guard the property. Number 5. Adaptable Breed the Tibetan Mastiff is extremely adaptable breed. It can live indoors, but they will without any problem stay all day and all night outdoors. They can also withstand low temperatures without any problems. In the place where the breed was developed, the Tibetan Plateau, temperatures normally fall deeply below 0 degrees Celsius, and the dogs have no problems with it. On the other hand, this region is also known for pretty hot summers, so the dog can adapt to warmer weather as well. But they should always have access to water all day long and they should have some shady spot where they can hide from the sun. Overall this is truly extremely adaptable dog breed. Number 6. Living Wave even though quite intimidating, the Tibetan Mastiff is actually a pretty sensitive dog breed that can read our emotions and is attuned to the emotions. They do not like harsh handling and even conflicts between family members. It is definitely extremely loyal dog breed that would protect its family. They are wary of strangers and it can take a while before they accept a complete stranger as a friend. These dogs also do not have high prey drive so they can live with other pets in the family, especially if so socialize together from the puppyhood. These dogs are also good partners for kids as they create strong natural bond with them and they consider them as those who need greater protection. But of course, you should never leave any dog breed with a very young child unsupervised. Number 7. Size 
Many people are fascinated by the strong body and large size of the Tibetan Mastiff, but it is important to say that these dogs should not be oversized. The standards say that the average height for females is 61 cm and for males 66 cm, which is 24 or 26 inches. Today we can see much larger dogs, especially those from the Chinese bloodline. Those dogs are bred to be overly massive, but it is also causing many health issues, such as hip dysplasia. Original Tibetan Mastiffs should be large and strong, but also athletic and agile. The size should not be a problem for its utilization. Guarding Overly massive dogs would paradoxically not be as good guardians as classically large Tibetan Mastiffs. The weight is not mentioned in the bridge standard but it is typically somewhere between 40 to 60 kilograms, which is 88 to 133 pounds. Females are naturally slightly smaller than males. Number 8. Coat as I already mentioned before, these dogs can withstand cold temperatures without any problems. The main reason is their extremely dense and thick double coat. The double coat consists of very thick and woolly undercoat and coarse guard hair. The coat should not be wavy or curly. Some individuals have visible thick mane around the neck and shoulders. The coat is normally also thicker at the tail and upper thighs. The coat comes in variety of colors and color combinations. Most commonly, you can find Tibetan Mastiffs in black, black and tan, blue gray, blue gray and tan, brown, brown and tan, red gold, red gold and sable, cream and cream sable with white markings. Number 9. Maintenance the Tibetan Mastiff shed some deal of fur all year long. Depending on the region and climate, they may or may not shed seasonally. To keep the coat in best possible condition and to minimize the shedding, it is recommended to brush Tibetan Mastiff regularly, during the shedding season even daily. Not only that regular brushing will remove any dirt and loose hair from the coat, it will also redistribute natural oils all over it and it will keep the coat matte and tangle free. Just like with any other the dog breed, you should also regularly check their eyes, ears, nails and teeth and clip them or clean them if needed. Number 10. Health the health and lifespan of Tibetan Mastiff really depends on the breed line. Some original Tibetan Mastiffs are very healthy dogs that can have average lifespan even around 14 years. On the other hand, for example, the Chinese Mastiff can suffer from many serious health issues and the lifespan would be around 9 or 10 years. Just like every single breed, even the Tibetan Mastiff can suffer from some serious health issues such as hip dysplasia, hypothyroidism, entropion, allergies, Cushing's disease, or cataracts. Especially the hypothyroidism is fairly common in this breed, but overall the Tibetan Mastiff is rather healthy and hardy breed, especially for a giant dog. Tell me in comments what do you like the most about the Tibetan Mastiff and what is your experience with this dog breed. If you are new on this channel, consider subscribing, turn the notifications on and check the Rocka Dogs links in description. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video.